Okay, so this tutorial is on the back muscles. If you want to learn a bit more in detail about the back muscles, look at my individual tutorials on the extrinsic muscles of the back and the intermediate and deep muscles of the back. I talk about innovation, uh, insertion and all that kind of stuff in a bit more detail than I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to work from superficial to deep and point out some of the major muscles that you should know about. So this muscle here is the trapezius, you probably all know this one, and this muscle elevates and depresses the scapula and it can also retract the scapula, so that's the trapezius. You've got the latissimus dorsi here which is Latin for the broadest muscle of the back and this is the biggest back muscle obviously. Um, and this muscle inserts onto the humerus so it adducts, extends and internally rotates the humerus. So just working our way deeper, just underneath the trapezius you've got the rhomboids, the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor. And these muscles attach to the scapula and they function to keep the scapula pressed against the thoracic wall. Um, and when the trapezius is contracted, um, they can retract the scapula. So here you've got the levator scapularis. And this muscle, as you can see, it attaches to the top of the scapula and it elevates the scapula when it's contracted. So that's the levator scapulae, these two muscles here. So those muscles which I've just covered are the extrinsic muscles of the back. Now we're going to be working our way deeper to the intermediate muscle there. Um, and here you've got the serratus posterior superior and the serratus posterior inferior. So you can see these muscles, they attach to the ribs and the superior one elevates the ribs and the inferior one depresses the ribs. So that these are the intermediate muscles involved in respiratory function. So now we've got the deep muscles of the back, the intrinsic muscles which are responsible for the movement of the spine and the head. So you've got these um, spinotransversalis muscles which move the head and neck. Um, You've got the splenius capitis and the splenius cervicus, two spinotransversalis muscles. This muscle here is the splenius capitis, and as you can see, it inserts onto the skull. So what this muscle does, if both muscles are contracted, it draws the head backwards and extends the neck. If just one of the muscles is contracted, then it will rotate the head round to that side. So that's the splenius capitis. For some reason on this model, the, the splenius cervicus isn't shown, but this originates a little bit lower down and inserts onto the transverse process of the um, first vertebra. So I'll get rid of those. So next we've got um, those muscles which move the vertebral column. You've got the erector spinae muscles and the transverso spinalis muscles. The erector spinae muscles are um, more superficial, so I'll begin with those. You've got three groups. So laterally, you've got the iliocostalis, this one here. In the middle, you've got the longissimus, and most medially, you've got the spinalis. So an acronym, uh, not an acronym, a mnemonic for remembering this is I long for spinach, I iliocostalis, long longissimus spinach spinalis so laterally to medial those are the erector spinae muscles and these are the primary extensors of the vertebral column and head and they're the largest group of intrinsic back muscles so deep to the erector spinae muscles you've got the transverso spinalis muscles so you've got three transverso spinalis muscles, the semispinalis which is the most superficial. You've got the multifidus here and then most deep you've got the rotaris muscles. 
So that covers very briefly the muscles of the back. If you want to look in more depth at those, take a look at the individual tutorials I've done on those various groups. Um, but hopefully that's useful and you just shows how which muscles are deep, which muscles muscles are superficial.